We did it, boys! Yeah, boy! What's going on, guys? Welcome back. We literally qualified through the first stage of the $60,000 mobile tournament. Yeah, boy! I'm not even a mobile player, and I friggin' qualified. Let's go! I'm going to show you a short video of all the highlights of the actual event and my game style. So, again, guys... Enjoy the video, but before you do, make sure you hit that subscribe button and enjoy the video. Let's go! At all from Executioner's point of view, Spit Rose. Manages to get a decent shot on the side there as well. Yeah, Smith coming in, waiting again for the play to come through. And Wizcoit, who has pretty much gone undetected for most of the uh, of the previous fights now, might be able to find Smith if decides to push up just a little bit too much. I think he might just be using the third-person perspective to see where Acro is, and that's the advantage that you have when you're in third-person. You can see over the top of the wall, yep. and you don't need to stress too much. So it's going to force Wizcoit to try and back off into a separate area. Smith, as well, is just still on the edge, and that could be massive for him. Acro is not going to be able to do anything unless he takes this fight onto Smith, who's just showing the head ever so lightly. Did Smith just see that? Because yep. Smith is playing this absolutely perfectly. Knows he's got the zone. There is absolutely no need for him right now to be trying to take any sort of fight. Aim knows yep. eventually. She's the furthest away, right? Wizcoit is close, but the problem is Smith with where he is. Unless they start throwing RPGs and... Because it's because there's radio silence, there's absolutely no noise coming through. No one knows where each other are, and they're yep. too afraid to give away their position. But the second that they aim Smith, just like this, here we go. The grenade launcher might start to dismantle what Smith has, but the way that he's built, actually, it completely destroys it, hits the base perfectly, and now out in the open, Smith is going to have to try and build quicker than he can because Wizcoit, as well, is going to be aiming tightly. But look how smart Smith builds. Yeah, puts the ramps up, also throws out an extra wall just on the side there, or in between in order to get that extra protection, give him that extra fortification. All three players are on the edge of the zone, and when that comes in, this is all going to be an absolute bloodbath. I think this is one of the, the second, the only the second time that we've seen the zone actually enclose in completely before it forces all the players out, and it is a it's a stalemate right now because no one wants to make the first move. It's too dangerous to open yourself up. And as the rockets now start coming out, they need to be doing this. They need to be dismantling each other's stuff because if they can burn through the materials quick enough, when it gets down, when it starts coming in, it's just going to have to be a raw fight, just raw aim. And it's probably the only way that either of these players want to be taking this. They don't want to be out in the open and getting picked out. But... Only 10 seconds left, Mendix. I know, and with everything coming across as well, if nothing happens, if everyone just chooses to stay put, it will be Smith who's going to be coming out on top, purely because he has the most amount of health, the most amount of shield. He, in essence, should be the person that can survive long enough, shortly, um, shortly followed beforehand by with Acro's death. So... Now we do have Smith beginning to make the move in, wants to take advantage of it, does have his structures immediately built up. Here is the blood buff we're talking about, pulls out the minigun and starts hailing bullets down on AIM. Acro seizes the opportunity and starts hitting AIM as well. He, they're still all alive. AIM at this moment is the only person inside the circle, but he will be taken down. Poor Smith at the moment is the only person out. Acro is actually able to hold on with a bit more HP and the move, the positioning from Acro there is what wins him that particular match. Not bad. We came second. We came second, boys. With two kills as well, so... That's not bad.
So, guys, the second game was an absolute flop. I'm going to show you all the details now of exactly what happened. But basically, the only reason I died in game number two was because of my ping. Obviously, I'm from the UK, so the US division, my ping went skyrocketed, froze me in a position, and I got killed. So I'll show you the clip now. So it wasn't really anything to look at, but I'll show you anyway. Come on. Nah, come on. I'm stuck. Oh. Someone just landed over there. I can't move. I'm fucked. Look. Look at my ping. I can't do anything. In <sighs> a storm, see if you can actually set herself up in a decent position. Smith? has actually jumped into the zone straight away. He has basically been a silent warrior this entire time, playing the edge of the map very well. And now he's put himself into a favorable position. Phenomenon now is trying to recapture some point in, some point in ground, is actually making a move on towards it. Smith has spotted out Chispa as well. Chispa's trying to go for the shot here. Oh. Does use the RPG, but doesn't it give that much damage across to it in the end? Phenomenon has shut down Queen A as well. Now we're back to the five, Chispa and Smith. With the high ground, Smith has been doing a great job of just holding Chisper off, but still hasn't done that much damage. Has reloaded the RPG, fires it once again, but it's just going to hit the side and not do too much. And Chisper, they actually did take a lot of damage on the side, and the RPG will be enough to finish off Chisper, who's been silently assassinating people on the side. Yeah, Smith, this is something that we saw him do in the first map, if you first match, if you remember. He got into the zone really early and started to build. This is what might win him the game if he manages to hold on strong enough. That's Phenomenon that's going to be coming in with quite haste, actually, as just dropping inside of the zone. Maybe has to push in a little bit further, but has the cover of the tree to do so. If Spit, if spit <laughs> decides to stop her from pushing on through, this could be devastating for Phenomenon. It's going to be trying to destroy the bottom of the structure. Might just do so. No, not yet. Smith still left alive now. It starts to slow back down. There's still 50 seconds here. Neither player needs to stress. They need to wait for that zone, possibly to close in a little bit further. And all oh, Smith's nearly being caught out there. Phenomenon's come right from the rafters. We didn't even see her really until the last four battles. And now Smith's been taken down to the bottom, just rebuilds, and the walls are there to support. But there's only one support frame in the bottom. If Phenomenon drops that down, they're all going to go tumbling. Hasn't managed to do so. And now Phenomenon needs to be careful. Spit Rose. <laughs> Again, dropping down onto the platform. And this is just an absolute dogfight. They've got so many mats that they should... Oh, actually, Smith only has 66 left. He needs to be so careful. Phenomenon doesn't have any either. I thought they had thousands, but I'm being mistaken. Smith decides to go up in the air. Oh, and that guided missile might just be it. You can't really do too much to get away from it. He's going to have to juke mid-air. I think he does manage to do it in the end. Phenomena has also jumped up as well. Smith is trying to shoot Phenomena out of the sky now. It seems to be his turn to get it, take an opportunity to go for the aim. He's continuing to move around. It's going to be an old-fashioned dogfight with no materials left. There's another shot there. The last of it is being used by Smith now to get up in that high ground. Phenomena is just sitting there trying to find a shot if possible. That... RPG is going to do some damage, take away some shield, but not too much as Phenomenon is still beginning to crawl a little bit further, trying to find its own shot. There's Smith taking very low, managing to find it. This is the final bit in the area, and the house pulled out the RPG once again with the shotgun shot, and it's going to be a finish by Phenomenon with the RPG. That was down to the wild. No materials left by both of these players.
I mean, absolutely. I mean, consider all things considered, Smith, that's his uh, second second placing there, including the first game. So, you know, all in all, 24 points should su secure him a spot. And really, I mean, with the one mm -hmm. kill there, is it just a matter of his perseverance more than anything else? Or is he actually got some gameplay we should keep uh, an eye out for the, in the finals? I honestly feel that he does have some gameplay mechanics. We saw it play out to what they're not only uh, once, but twice in the first uh, first match or the first round to keep the production getting, team happy. Just getting edged out there. Yeah, exactly. He he, he does play the fringe well. Yeah. Uh, I think unlike other players that were playing, like Ahab, for example, who were sitting back more towards, more than happy to sit there in the storm for a while, he's more about uh, just staying right in front of that storm. And that that's sort of his strength and advantage because he's able to continue farming up and around and picking up mats, which puts him in a fairly strong position when he does get to that last final circle. Yeah, I think consistency is key, right? So if he's consistently making the top five and managing to build as well, then there's got to be the question there. Yes, I think that he could take this into the final. I think that he could be more dangerous. Uh, but again, it, it is that it is the whole thing of uh, you don't know what you've got until you actually have to be tested, right? Yeah. There's been no massive test for Smith just yet. He's been able to, as you said, play around the fringe, make it into the top five, and then he just goes straight in and builds up. But that in itself is a strategy, right? And he's stuck to it, and that's proof in the pudding. That'll be all for week one of CD Showdown. We will be back next week with another two regions in Mediterranean, in the Mediterranean and North America. So there we go, guys. We qualified. Now, the next stage for me is in two weeks' time. There's still two more events, the Group C and D, next weekend. Um, I'll bring you the action on there. I'll probably live stream it. But again, hope you enjoyed the video, guys. We friggin' did it. We qualified. If you are not subscribed yet, make sure you hit that subscribe button and I'll keep you updated on all the new details in Creative Destruction. Let me know in the comments exactly what you thought about the event. Let's go! Gila.